What's up, folks? Here in the afternoon, Automate Day 3. I'm joined by my co-host, Jay Call, the Manufacturing Millennial. I'm Chris Lukey, host of Manufacturing Happy Hour, and we've got two guests on the show this afternoon. Full house Absolutely. here at the desk. There is two of here us. Here at the desk. We've got <laughs> Arian Kabir from Gray Matter Robotics, and we've got Jerry Perez, Jerry Perez from Fanuc. 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 We're going to go through that again, yeah, I guess. Panic, <laughs> everyone. It's so Panic. funny. The last time we did an interview, that we was did, like the did. first conversation we had, and I messed it up. Yeah, I'll mess job. it up for eternity. I'm sorry. Okay, I guess that, that was Jerry. memorable. Well, Jerry, in that case, you get to answer the first question. Yes. How about that? We'll, okay. we'll call that a fair trade. Um, so, you know, we want to talk a little bit about partnerships. We're also going to be talking about grinding and surface finishing. That's going to be the bulk of it. But we got to hear how you two met first. Now you started working together. So, Jerry, I want to hear your end of the story first, and then... You know, Arian, I'd love to hear yours as well. I saw Arian from a distance, you know, I just had that look. I was like, man, I got to know that guy. But it was, it was at a trade show. It's how you meet, it's how you make yeah. a lot of your initial uh, contacts with somebody. So uh, I was walking by the booth and then I looked you up kind of quickly because I knew just that uh, he was sponsored by one of my largest customers, right? Or they were sponsoring him. So looked into it found some dirty intelligence and said, hey, I heard you, blah, blah, blah. And he said, how'd you find that out? I said, you know, I got my sources. <laughs> it really was the beginning of a, of a interesting conversation, yeah. interesting part. Uh, you talk about partnership. It was great. Tell me a bit more about what your story is. What are you trying to do? Great. Let me see if we can help you out. And then just finding on the court ways to help each other out. Very mutual beneficial partnership here. You know, just really how we met at a trade show had mutual benefits, yeah. and we just went to market, baby. It was, uh, <laughs> it's, it's really been great. It's been They're, awesome. They've got some cool stuff. Awesome. How, well, what do you think? How do you think we met? Exactly the same thing that you just okay, said. Good. I, I wasn't the lying. Couple thing I'll add is, you know, uh, David and Scott from Fanuc Southern California, they had been great partners. So I, you know, knew them since my days at USC when I was doing PhD. And then we had at the trade show with a non-yellow robot at that time. That's right. And then Jerry, Scott, and David was like, okay, we have to change the color of this robot. And so and far, did. I think, you know, uh, Fanuc has been a great partner, great support for us. And together we are, you know, opening up new opportunities. And as you, as you mentioned, Chris, creating new applications that has never been done before or never been automated before. So a applications I've chased for 20 years, <laughs> finally. And that's part, that's part of why really why I was interested. Yeah. I saw yeah. them doing something that I've been asked to do for 20 years, and finally yeah. they're doing it. So, so excellent. Well, let's walk away with this. What makes a good partnership? What makes a good robotics partner? How's oh. that? Okay, that's different. Yeah. Okay. What, 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 what makes what makes a good robotics partner? So, end of the day, Jake, you you know, customers need a solution. All these manufacturers, they need a solution that that's going to work. And often, all these customers, they don't have the in-house expertise to actually put together the solution. And if you look at a robotic solution, automation solution, there's so many different pieces. There's the robot, there's your sensors, there's your tools, depending on the application that you're working on. And then, then there's the piece of whole intelligence, especially if you're talking about high mix, high variability manufacturing. Your robots need to be smart, intelligent, it needs to adapt with all the variations and variabilities. So now if you look at all the different components, you really have to find partners because one single entity can do it all, can do it all right at scale. So you really have to partner with all these different folks, all these different organizations. And Fanuc has been a great partner for us in terms of having the right robot, the right solution, let it be a sanding application or a grinding application or a painting application. And then 3M is a great partner for us, bringing in all their you know, plethora of knowledge of abrasives and material science, helping us to create that end solution for yeah. that customer. Awesome. I have, a little, can I, I have a little self-serving you know, self yeah. answer to that. Well, let's hear it, Jerry. <laughs> well, it really, what makes a good partnership is are we serving each other's needs? Yeah. Yeah. Really, are yeah. the results yeah. getting produced out of the little time that we really have these days to work together? Yeah. And can you produce results for each other? And at the end of the day, if you've got a good product, we've got a good service of, you yeah. know, to support that, we get straight to it. So exactly. for us, good chemistry, good you know, in terms of our companies or even their personalities in the companies, so there's that chemistry part of it, but there's also still the deliverables of the product. Right. So it's, it's just a good yeah. match all around. If I need anything, I can text Jerry. I know middle of the night and he responds. Anything. Pizza? Anything, yeah. <laughs> Donuts? Recommend. What's a good wine pairing? <laughs> Pizza delivered by robots. That's, That's right. what we need. That's what we need. Next well, episode. Hey, we're gonna, we'll are gonna talk more about partnerships at the end because there's another partnership we need to touch on. But to get there, let's talk surface finishing, treatment solutions, right? Let's talk about the current state and then let's talk about where they're going, right? Jerry, you've got a lot of background in this area. Maybe you kick us off in the current state of these solutions and then 
area, and I'd love for you to tack onto that after that. Sure. All right. Current solutions, manual, dirty, dull, you know, those kinds of applications. I was looking up uh, pictures of injuries. We talked, yep. I had a talk yesterday about the reasons for automation, and part of it was safety concerns. And I said, can we show images of this? And they're like, no, you can't. Because they're gnarly, right? Yeah. So the current state of finishing, uh, surface finishing applications, they're typically dirty. Nobody wants to hold a grinding wheel for eight hours straight. Nobody wants to be, po I polished and refinished my own furniture at home. Never want to do that ever again. <laughs> sure. I wish I had your technology at that time. <laughs> Thanks for you know being a little bit late to the market here. <laughs> But so that's where it, it that's where it's at. There's a lot of opportunity, yeah. but not a lot of skill set to do the programming required. That's just the state of the union, right? That's currently what it's right. going to look like. Is great. Let me take my sanding wheel, my polishing wheel, my grinding wheel, my my finishing tool, stick it at the end of a robot, and then I can drag that robot by hand, like our CRX Cobot. I can do it that way. But if I have a hundred different parts. I'm not sure I want to go after that that solution either. So state of the marketplace, a lot of a lot of automation already done for high volume, yep. low mix type applications. But now you got this marketplace where people want robots for high mix, low volume, and then little teeing up here. Yeah, you know what solutions are now available today, right? Yeah, no, I mean I think Jerry pretty much covered all of it, right? So if you look at the state of the art, I mean, has robots been doing grinding for several years? Yes but in which space, in a very small, you know, limited capacity. When you have identical part, a large number of it, you can program a robot, the robot repeats the same movement again and again, works out beautifully. But more than 90% of manufacturing is high mix in nature, high mix, high variability. Sometimes it's even high mix, high variability with high volume. For example, one of our customers, they make several millions of parts every year, but each single part is slightly different. So now, how do you enable robots to program themselves? That becomes the question. How can robots adapt to all these varying needs? And that's, those are some of the problems that we're solving with our advanced physics and from AI technologies. And I think that's the biggest thing that we're running into right now is a lot of large companies don't have a hard time automating, right? They have the team behind it, they have the budget behind it. But when you look at 98.6% of manufacturers are still small to medium sized businesses, they might not have an entire engineering department with dedicated robot controls engineers that can deploy this stuff. So how do we leverage technology to be the democratizer of automated finishing and automated working? Right, and you know, there are a few different pieces to it. Even when you have a lot of engineers in-house, right, to program robots, when it comes to high mix or high variability, it's not economically feasible. Think about programming the robot every six minutes for every little change. It becomes infeasible. And you know, it's not just that we're in shortage of you know, skilled labor for manufacturing, but also we're in shortage of you know, programmers for robots. I know Fanuc has a lot of great educational program to build the next generation of programmers, but that's not sufficient for the growing need that we have, not just in the US, but all over the world. Yeah, totally. Essentially, that's where you know, technologies like advanced artificial intelligence and advanced you know, uh, perception and control systems come in and combine together, you create autonomous solutions for certain applications. So application specific autonomous solutions is something that we're observing now, opening up new opportunities and new markets and solving the need for vast majority of manufacturers. And for years, autonomous artificial intelligence equaled expensive, not yeah. affordable, I should say, right? And right. now with RAS models, robot as a service models, it makes it more affordable, you can deploy it. Yeah. I, can, I can capitalize it and actually get this, a lot of money went into, a lot of time went into, right. into developing the solutions, but right. those RAS models now make it actually uh, available now yeah. for the marketplace. Yeah. I think it's appropriate that we are talking about a wide range of technologies that impact grinding and finishing because we're at Automate right now, it's May 2023, but in July 2023, yep. we're going to be in Minneapolis, the Grinding and Finishing Conference, A3 also hosting that. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about that, like things you're excited for in the industry right now, and things maybe people can expect this is the, from Because this that. is the first time this conference is happening, right? You know, and so, right, that's the first time, and, and 3M's partnering with that, but you know, why now? Why, why build a conference around it, I think, you know, and add into that? Sure, I mean, again, that market where we're getting a lot of requests, hey, we have manual operators, we can't even find manual operators, first of all, uh, anymore, to do these dull, dirty applications, so the market's been hot. And so we need to educate the market on, here's the solutions, yep. not just high level, hey, let's automate. Great, you have an actual need. We've been hearing a lot of demand for these applications to be automated. Now let's get together, have a focused conference on that. 
you see all these kinds of technology here, right? So let's have a conference dedicated to that so you can get with Arian, sit with him, let's, let's nail down what our solution is to get a lot more you know, time and attention for these specific applications. Yeah, and also this particular conference, the way 3M is organizing it this year, it's great. It's overlapping with the 3M Open. So there's a lot of demo going on for with different robotic surface finishing and grinding applications. And Gray Matter will have a solution there demonstrating adaptive application, how advanced AI can address the high mix, high variability need. But beyond that, there are many other demos available in that conference. So as Jerry mentioned, it's, a, it's, a, it's the right time, the right place to start having that collaborative discussions to identify what are the requirements and how we can push forward the solutions to be of practical use. It's summer, it's warm, yeah. that becomes the right time. We have a beer bot, it's not finishing, <laughs> but we're gonna have a beer bot at the 3M Open if we're gonna plug that at all, you know? I'm and Jerry, you're giving a presentation there as well, right? I am, I'm giving a presentation there, it's on uh, successful automation implementation, if I can add the word democratization in there yeah, as well. Yeah, right, how, long can, you, how there, long can right? you make it? How many buzzwords can I have in there of shins, you know, basically, <laughs> but it's, it is the, the 20 years of experience of how do yeah. you implement automation you know, strategies, what does that look like? And if you heard my talk today, you got a preview of what that looks like. Yeah, yeah but I'll, I'll be giving that talk there. So, yeah. one final question as we begin to wrap things up. If you were to pull out your crystal ball of what you're going to see being the main applications, the main industries that are going to be starting to adopt this, and the ways they're going to adopt it, what are you predicting? Jerry, we'll what start you, with no, you. I'm not, I don't want to start first, <laughs> you go first. No, I, th I think it's a, it's, a, it's a wide range, Jake. I mean, if you really look at it, I mean, with FANUC, us, 3M, we are working with many different industries at the same time. We're working with aerospace, defense, specialty vehicles, buses, trains, trucks. We're working with the maritime industry, boats, yachts, and not just that, big vessels, aircraft carriers, submarines. So this vast majority of non-automotive transportation segments, that's ripe for automation, that's ready to adopt some of these solutions. And not just that, if you really look around us, anything and everything around our daily life, let it be your guitar, or your you know, football helmet, or your surfboard, or even the bathtub at your home, or the sink or the countertop. So a wide area of industries are now ready to adopt automation, they're in this dire need to adopt these solutions. So essentially at the core we're solving together, we're solving two major problems. A, we're helping to improve the quality of human lives, and B, we're building that backbone of economy by automating all this essential work that no one is ready to do anymore. I love it, everything. Yeah. That, was, that was great. I think we covered the gambit besides fruit. <laughs> <laughs> but it is like that. Hey, yeah. I have put anything in front of this robot application, in, in front of this robot, it's going to Santa, it's going to finish it, right? Yeah. It's applied to anything. What's going to be the market where people are going to be spending money? I wanted to say RV, I wanted to say, you know, leisure type vehicles, boats, mm -hmm. ski doos things like that, but now I'm a little bit hesitant to say, yep. is the money and the spending happening there, right? Where are we seeing that trend we thought that was spiking, right? right? But maybe it's going to be the defense industry and aerospace yep. where we're seeing that market and that trend start to pick up again. So it's variable, so it's going to yep. be applied at e each one of those, so we're kind of ready for e any of the right. markets that are you know, spending money today. Well, hey, it's been great having you both on, Jerry. Good to have you back yeah. on one of our joint podcasts. Arian, I don't know how it took us this long to have you on. Like, <laughs> yeah. I feel like this has been long overdue, but hey, we will be seeing you. We'll be seeing everyone yeah. in Minneapolis in July. Yeah. In the meantime, we'll be back for more interviews here at Automate 2023 very soon.